Combat gunshots were last heard in the north eight years ago, but its impact still resonates in communities. Because of a number of challenges here, Daniel Komakech, the director of Gulu University's Institute of Peace and Strategic Studies, believes that the region is far from peaceful. So we still have conflicts except they've changed the, uh, the nature. It's no longer LRA, it is various conflicts. You have land, you have uh, issues of uh, the properties, issues of, uh, of revenge. At the peak of the conflict, several state operatives were provided guns. Vigilante groups like the Amuka and Arrow Boys in Lango and Teso were also formed. Now questions linger over their demobilization and resettlement. They call them operative. At night, you find them, all of them, moving with guns. And they may say, we are making patrols. You ask yourself, where are they getting those guns from? Is the government giving them those guns? Yet those are civilians, those are boys who stay together with the community members. At night, you find them patrolling with guns. Government needs to get down and find out whether they are those who receive guns, how they receive the guns, get all their records, recover the guns. Of concern, too, is the hundreds of people who returned from captivity. Many guns have been collected from them, but there are worries that some may not have handed in their weapons. We are also beginning to hear that there are those who probably escaped from captivity and, and they, they had guns. And some of them, for either fear of, uh, uh, many of them were not sure what would happen. So some of them out of fear decided to hide their guns. People actually trust religious leaders, people trust cultural leaders. UPDF, well, UPDF has its law. You have illegal gun. What do we do? That is treason. That is an offense. Let them bring over these weapons to us. We have no trouble with them. But problems emanate from people that sit on them. Some local leaders, however, say they are yet to know of any legal guns in their vicinity. LCs here are usually informed about wrong elements. Most of the more than 26,000 former LRA abductees have been resettled by non-governmental organizations like World Vision. But with no long-term government plan for their recovery, the excitement that will come their return has evaporated. The orientation in the bush was that you don't have anything, pick a gun, you get what you want. So now that you don't have the livelihood and you've simply been reinserted in the community, the gun becomes an option. They came back knowing very well that they would be supported, they would be rehabilitated, they would become very productive. Poverty and unemployment in the region has led to fears that security measures alone may not reach the region of armed robbery. The robbers are also looking for ways of survival. The fact that it's coming from a victim of the recent robbery is even more scary. But that is the complexity of the situation here, and a pointer that a more sustainable approach in the recovery of the region should be developed. Moses Sakena, NTV.